Hello, Rebels, and welcome back to Episode 3 of Star Wars Rebellion. We're going to start Round 4, but there's a couple things that I did wrong in the last video. The first thing I did wrong is whenever you use Saber Dice to heal, it has to match the health of the specific ship. Second thing, whenever you do damage from a tactics card, that damage is allocated immediately. That means that even as an attacker, I could, if I roll those Saber Dice, heal that damage. So when I took out that ATAT, -AT, I probably shouldn't have been able to because the Empire should have been able to heal it, but trying to go back and fix that combat would be insane, so we're just going to leave it as is. Third thing is, a lot of people have had a question about this, and it's not clear in the rule book, but based on the forums on BGG and the forums on Fantasy Flight, there is now a significant, well, I wouldn't say significant, but there's definitely an advantage to being a defender. Because when you're a defender, you roll your dice second. That means that when you're the attacker and you roll those sabers, unless you have ships that have damage on them from maybe tactic cards or maybe they have multiple health and so they have portions of their health damaged, you can repair those or heal those, but you can't save them and wait to use them until after the defender rolls. That's different from the base game because the base game, those didn't heal, they let you play tactic cards. So that's why it can be kind of confusing, but that has been confirmed at least to the point where I feel comfortable that I'm playing that right. So the attacker will roll their dice, use them all. You don't get to save any of the saber dice, and then the defender rolls their dice. Finally, do you remember this? I had the Millennium Falcon on Obi-Wan Kenobi. No, it needed to be on one of the two leaders that was recruited with that card. So yeah, it's with Han Solo now, as it should be. The Millennium Falcon is with Han Solo. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh yeah, there was one more thing. I should have been able to take out one additional X-Wing fighter because I had a tactics card that did one damage in that first fight in Utapau. Once again, I'm not going to change it because I probably should have lost different ships. So I'm just going to leave it so that they have their four TIE fighters. And yeah, we'll just leave it that way. Okay, now let's jump in. During the assignment phase this round, I am looking to do a lot of different missions, six of them. I only have Obi-Wan Kenobi not on a mission card in case I want to try and oppose something. I'm going to have Princess Leia do some building alliances. I'm going to have Mon Matha go ahead and do a promotion. That's going to get me another leader. I'm going to have a sabotage here by Han Solo. Perfect. <laughs> I'm going to have behind the enemy lines with Saw Gerrera. This is going to be fun. I'm hoping to maybe complete one of my first objective cards with that. I have Luke here trying infiltration, so that way hopefully he can succeed and we can find that Yoda card. And then I do have two of my leaders here on rapid mobilization. And you'll see why I'm doing that in case they happen to move from Ord Montel to Ilum. I can then move my base at the end of this round. For the Empire, the first thing we'll do is grab one of their starting mission cards. And then what I did, remember how we drew a ton of mission cards that we couldn't use? I shuffled all the ones that we didn't use back into here. And now I'm going to draw three of these. Great. And then I'm going to shuffle these up. Now, they'll never have more than four missions in a specific round, just so you know. Okay, there we go. Our first mission card, we're going to play it, Build Alliance with Princess Leia. We're going to try this over here at Bespin. Now, the resources aren't that great. Yeah, an orange circle's good. But the thing is, is in this region, there's only two populous systems. And if we get loyalty here, at the end of this refresh phase, we gain one influence. Let's see if the Empire is going to try and oppose that. A six. Of course they're going to. Dang it! The only good thing is we already pulled out Emperor Palpatine then. He's going to use his three diplomacy to R2. And no, that's not R2-D2. That's just R2 diplomacy. <laughs> R2 dice to his three. And we actually succeeded. One, two, three to one. Princess Leia pulling it in. I think she is the one who also helped us just at the end of the last round sneaking in that sabotage. Man, she is a key leader. Leia talking the talk and convincing Bespin to be on our side. I love it. Moving to the Empire, one through a three, they're going to move. A five, they're going to do a mission. 
We'll flip the top card and we have gather intel. So this is one of their basic starting missions. Attempt in any rebel system. If successful, draw one probe card for every four rebel units at the rebel base. That would mean they'd get two probe cards with this because we have what one two three four five six seven eight nine nine uh, units there Ugh, two probe cards they're going to go ahead and do that in mustafar and i think i'm just going to let him have it i mean uh, i want to keep obi-wan just in case for anything else so i'm going to give him the two probe cards they're going to go ahead and grab kato nimodia that's not a remote system, so that's fine. They knew it wasn't there anyways. And Dagobah. <laughs> that is another remote system. They are getting way too much intel on us. Just so you know, there's only eight remote systems, and they already know almost half of them are not where the rebel base is. Back to us, and I think we're going to try and do a sabotage. What better place to sabotage than Sullust? Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Will the Empire try and oppose? One through a four is a no. And by one through a four, I mean one through a three. <laughs> Jeez. But yeah, one through a three is not opposing, so we just sabotaged. That would be sabotage marker number two. One more, and we can complete that other objective as well. Moving back to the Empire, one through a three, they're going to move. A six, they're going to do another mission. The Empire will play... Discredit Rebellion. Oh, this doesn't look good. Resolve in any system that contains a sabotage marker. Well, I just put one. The rebel player must either remove all sabotage markers from the board or roll one die. If he rolls at least one special symbol, he loses one reputation. If Admiral Mati resolves this mission, the rebel player rolls two dice instead of one. Fortunate for us, Admiral Mati is not in the game yet, so they'll use general a general tag. Oh, I do not want to remove those sabotage markers. I'm going to take the chance. It's only a one in six chance that's going to be happening. I'm going to go ahead and resolve this in Ryloth over here. And it, since this is a resolve, we can't defend against this or oppose it. We just have to roll the die. Come on. Nobody's going to listen to General Tag, right? <laughs> right. Oh, gosh. I saw a symbol. Made me worried. It had to be this symbol. So I'm all right. I think it's time for a little bit of infiltration. What do you think? We're going to use Luke, and we're going to do this in Ord Mantel. Are they going to oppose? Yes, they will. And you know who they're going to send? They're going to send Soontir Fell over into Ord Mantel. We'll be rolling two dice. Ord Mantel will be rolling one. <laughs> Luke with one success. Perfect. Just enough. We're now going to play our special card. Because we have succeeded at a mission in our location with Luke Skywalker, we're going to find the Seek Yoda card. And then we can resolve this in the Dagobah system next time and bring out Master Jedi Luke Skywalker. <laughs> I'm excited. And, of course, we succeeded at the intel, so we get to look at the top two. Play after you win a ground battle in a subjugated system. That's one influence. Cool. And combat. If you have at least one fighter... Oh, this is the Death Star plans. Ooh. Well, the Death Star... And, you know, I would say that this is because I'm playing the AI. The Death Star has not come into play a lot. But I don't really want to put this on the bottom of the deck. But this one... Oh, we could so do this. Oh, which one do I want to do? I'll take the chance. There's a Death Star plan in the third area here. And not until that Death Star really comes into play... I'm going to go ahead and leave this one on top. And I have it the wrong way. There we go. Moving back to the Empire. And they're going to do another mission. Wow, does this die have anything but a five on it? I feel like I've rolled a five every time for them. We'll flip their next card. And they have Lure of the Dark Side. Attempts against a captured leader. Yep, we don't have a captured leader. So let's grab another one. And we'll reveal this one. Draw them out. Attempt in any system that does not contain a rebel unit. If successful, choose a leader in the leader pool and take it from its system. Oh. And you can see the uh, the picture up here. They have uh, Krennic's Finest. So we have to use that leader. I'm not going to try and oppose this because I'd have to use Obi-Wan anyways. So we'll just throw Obi-Wan and Krennic over here in Endor. 
We're going to do one of our first Resolve cards that we have. <laughs> resolve in a Rebel system. So this means that the Empire cannot stop this. We're going to have Mon Matha here. Choose, an, choose either Admiral Akbar, Wedge Antilles, or General Medin, which we're definitely going to take General Medin. Um, and we're going to recruit that later and place them in this system. Mon Matha must have met General Medin over here in Utapau, where there's this trade embargo going on. And so although Utapau is loyal to the rebels, we can't get off of the planet. And General Medin says, I'm going to come and help you guys. Yes. Back to the Empire. One through three, they're going to move. Finally, they're going to move. Okay, a one through three, they're going to look at a remote system. Four through six, they're going to do something that best interests them. One through three, they're going to move through uh, to a remote system. Thank goodness they can't move to Ilum. Here's the thing, you guys. There is no remote system that they don't already know is not one of our rebel bases adjacent except for Ilum. But the problem is, is Ord Mantell, they already have Suntir Fell there, so they can't move those units. So what they're going to do is they're going to move the, movements, the units from Salakami over here to Felucia. So they are one away from both Yavin and Danthamir. And let's see. Okay, first of all, the Death Star can hold, I believe it's eight units. So yeah, they can hold all of these ground troops, bring them into here. They're going to subjugate this system. This system's loyal, so they won't leave anybody there. And then next time, they can come here and then come down here to Dathomir. Sorry, you can't see that. There we go. Dathomir, and they can check out these ones, and Dantooine is over here. And, of course, they need a leader to do that, so they're going to use General Veers. We've waited long enough. Now it's time to have a little fun behind enemy lines. Resolve in a subjugated or rebel system. Move up to five units from the rebel base space to this system as if it were adjacent. Leaders in the rebel base space do not prevent this movement. If there are imperial units in this system, resolve combat. We're going to bring in to Ord Mantel two Mon Calamari cruisers, an airspeeder, and two rebel infantry. <laughs> I am taking a risk here, but what I'm trying to do, if I can, is I'm going to try and take out all the units here. If I can do that, I gain an influence. Now, you can see there's already leaders in this specific system. So what we can do is we can always take the best tactical value of the leaders there. So because of that, I still think the Empire would bring Darth Vader. Because Darth Vader, although only has two for space, he can reroll three for the land units. For this first round of combat, we're going to play Draw Their Fire. And we're going to use the bottom here. Until the end of the combat during space battles, you resolve your attacks after the Imperial player. So even though we're attacking, we're actually going to make them roll their dice first. <laughs> okay. And we'll mess these up. And they're going to play... Uh, they don't have a Super Star Destroyer, so just prevent two red hits. Oh, gross. The Empire's going to roll one green die, two red, and one black. Mon Calamari's have four red health, so they're looking for red damage. And they have one red and one direct damage, so they'll keep these two and re-roll these two. And, yeah, that's going to be useless to them. We haven't done any damage to them. But so they're going to do two hits onto one of our Mon Calamaris. Our Mon Calamari cruisers get to roll two red dice and one black. And we have two of them that just showed up. And we get to re-roll two because we have Luke Skywalker here. And, wow, this is nice. So we've got these two that are red hits. They're going to be prevented, okay, because of their blasted card they rolled. This is a direct damage. That's great. This can repair. So I like that. So I think I'm going to re-roll these two. Come on. Nice. Well, I think this one's going to be useless, but another direct damage. Useless. What am I saying? This TIE Striker has black damage, so or black health, so perfect. These two will be uh, reduced, but these two will do two points of damage here and will repair one point on our Mon Calamari. <laughs> That was a great fight so far. Now we're going to move to the ground battle, and you can imagine what we're going to do until the end of the combat. During ground battles, you resolve your attacks as uh, after the Imperial player. I mean, why not? We don't. We aren't going to attack the Empire that often. So when we do, I want to still roll second. <laughs> 
and they're going to play until the end of the combat during the, you resolve your attacks. Oh, dang it! So I think because they played this, hmm, I think they just cancel each other out. So that means we're going to have to roll first. Bummer! We each also get three dice that we can re-roll because they have Darth Vader and we have Saw Gerrera. Okay, so we're going to roll one red and three black. This is going to be hard. They have two ATSTs with two red health. Come on. Okay, that's not a very good roll. That's only one point of red damage, and then we'll re-roll these three. Come on. Oh, man, it killed me. They totally knew I was going to play that card because I played it in space. Ah, uh, all useless. Black damage. Oh, no, it's not useless. They still have stormtroopers, so I can use these for the stormtroopers. Right now, the two stormtroopers will be toast, and they'll have one out of the two damage that we need on their ATST. That's, of course, if they don't heal them. The Empire will roll four black dice and two red dice and get three rerolls. Okay, so they've got two heals. I think they might keep both of those. And then these two damage, they'll definitely keep. Mm, I don't know. So they're going to reroll these two. They get to reroll a third. I, I, I don't know. Maybe they reroll a heal. That's a hard thing to decide. I, I guess they'll just reroll the heal. Let's see what happens. And, I mean, that maybe wasn't the best idea, but they did do another point of damage. Well, this didn't shake out too well for us. <laughs> they will heal their stormtrooper because, and I can't remember if I did this right with Armand Calamari, so I'll make a note. Sorry, I, I just cannot remember what I rolled. Um, but they have to heal black health so they can heal this stormtrooper, but this one's toast, and this ATST will still have one point of damage. Our airspeeder will have one point of damage. It has two red health, so it still has one left. But both of our Rebel Troopers are toast. So it's going to be three on one next uh, ground combat. Moving to the next space combat, we're going to play Prevent Two Red Hits since we have a Mon Calamari. You may play one additional space tactics card. And we get to choose that after we see what they choose. And they're going to choose this. Rebel Ships cannot remove damage uh, using this icon this combat round. Okay. So then I think what we're going to do is also play Outrun Them. Next combat round, the Imperial player cannot play a Space Tactics card. Yeah, that's what we want. We want an advantage. The Imperials will still roll first. We're still in the same combat. Only has one Star Destroyer. He gets to re-roll two, so he has one damage for now. And two, which are both prevented by our uh, card. So they don't do anything. Nice. Our two Mon Calamaris get to roll four red dice and two black. Oh, yes. This is what we want. Damage, damage, damage. We don't even have to re-roll. Three points of damage will be enough to take out their Star Destroyer, and we now control the air. We're going to play Take Cover this round. Prevent one red hit and one black hit. And the Empire is going to play... Oh, I just played two cards. Sorry. Um, is going to play this one, deal two damage. So essentially, this is going to prevent the two damage that they're doing here. So it's whatever we roll. We get a whopping red and a black. And that's two points of damage. That is awesome. That'll take out the ATST and the Stormtrooper right here. The Empire gets three black and two red. And they only get one hit, but it's the right hit. But they do get to reroll three, and they're looking to get tactics so that they can repair. And they didn't. <laughs> they got two black hits. So, yeah, unfortunately, my airspeeder is toast, but they only have an ATST left. I was so close to completing that objective. Although I control the air, they still have one ground unit here, so they still have it subjugated as well. Uh, I've got to think about what I want to do there. Oh, I'm so ticked. <laughs> one unit away. Okay, going back to the Empire, they're going to do their final mission. Let's flip over their final mission card, and we have Make an Example. Can't do that one, so we'll grab this one, and we have Construct Factory, and they can do this one. Oh, this is a project. You can always tell it's a project by this thing in the corner. Resolve in any Imperial system. 
Place units on the build queue using this system's resource icons and number. If there's a sabotage marker on the system, remove this before resolving this. Yeah, they're going to go back to Corellia, and the only leader they have left is General Moff Tarkin, and so he's got the tactics icon. Oh, man. He'll go ahead and place this in Corellia, take this off, and he's going to gain uh, a TIE Fighter, and he's going to gain a Star Destroyer in spot three of the build queue. Yeah, it is hard to keep up with their production, that is for sure. We finally took out one of those, and they're just going to bring it back. <laughs> so we have this rapid mobilization card, and my plan was to move back all the surviving units from Ord Mantel back to Ilum. But I don't think I'm going to do that, because if I do that, then um, the Empire can place units in Ord Mantel. I don't want to do that. So I'm actually not going to resolve this card. You can do that. You can just say you're done with your turn and not resolve a card, even if it still has leaders on it. We're going to go ahead and start the refresh phase. The first thing is, at the start of the refresh phase, if there are no captured leaders, we're going to play this objective card. Now, let's say we could play multiple at the start of a refresh phase objective cards at this point. You can only ever do one around. So I was thinking that I was going to have two, except for they yanked my sabotage marker off the board. <laughs> Blast you. So because of that, this was the only one that we could do, leave no one behind. But we now are going to move that marker down to 14 from 15. We'll also draw our two new mission cards, and we have contingency plan, and we have base defenses. We'll finally move our influence marker back to where it should have been at the beginning of the game. Because <laughs> remember, we recruited Saw Guerrera, so we just got back down to 14. Also, since we're here, I'm also going to move ourselves to round five. So if you think about it, we only have nine more rounds. That's still a lot of time we have to survive. The Empire will gain two probe cards. They get Mon Calamari, and they'll get Nel Hutta. Neither of those are ones that are um, remote, so we're okay there. And, of course, we gain the Liberation Objective card. We each would get to recruit another leader, but unfortunately, there is a new rule in this game that you can never have more than eight leaders. Well, the Empire already has eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So they're good. What we'll do is we'll draw the top card of this action deck. Okay, this is a new leader. So I'm going to take a quick gander at that leader. And if it's stronger than any of the other leaders that they have, you're supposed to eliminate the excess so you only have eight leaders. Moff Jijarod is pretty weak. So we're just going to have the Empire eliminate him. They won't be able to use this action card and we're good to go. They have their set of eight leaders. For us, we actually now have nine leaders because I recruited Saw Guerrera and I gained an additional leader through that um, recruit card. So I'm going to have to get rid of a couple leaders. But we're still going to see what we can gain here. We have Bay's Loyalty or Trust in the Force. I think I'm going to go with Chirrut Imwe because I want some more fight and he's got some diplomacy. And I think... I'm going to go ahead and grab this Bay's Loyalty. But now I have to get rid of a couple leaders. So after looking at my leader pool, I think I'm going to eliminate Jan Dodana and General Riken. Ugh, it's not fun. I don't want to do that, but I can only have eight. There is no build phase this time, so we just do our movement down the build queue. Look at what's all in here. It's all bad for us. <laughs> the two locations of deployment for the Imperials will be Corellia, and they'll place two land. No, they can't do that because then they can't carry them. One land and one carrier. And then we'll place this Stormtrooper here in Felucia. Oh, you guys, I totally forgot about Krennic's Finest. Let's see uh, where he would have captured someone. Malastare. Okay, we didn't have anybody in Malastare. So we're okay. We'll grab these. Let's give them a shuffle up. Remember, there was the three locations. We'll pick this one for the next round. Oh, I don't like this. Right now we know the rebel base is safe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my third Mon Calamari cruiser over here in Mustafar. I want to protect this and the Carillion Corvette. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be fun to take on. Then over here in Ryloth, we're going to go ahead and place an X-Wing and a Y-Wing. Yeah, see, I'm thinking maybe we can take Geonesis next time. So far, we're doing all right. 
I'm really enjoying that we took over Ord Mantel. I just wish we would have taken out this unit. Um, but Ilum is pretty much safe right now. It's going to be really hard for them to get units over there. So that's good. And if you look everywhere else, we've got Mustafar protected a little bit more. Ryloth to go ahead and do some Geonesis attacks. Yeah, we're ready to continue harassing the Empire. And hopefully get some of these objectives done so we can push up our influence. Let's start that next round. For this round, I have picked these missions. The ones that you need to know about are Contingency Plan, and I am setting up for another rapid mobilization. And that's because I think I'm going to try and do an attack action over here and destroy that ATAT. -AT. But in order for myself to do that, I'm going to have to reveal where our rebel base is. Our Imperial player will still pick one starting mission and three of these missions. And shuffle those ones up, and they are good to go. Since we go first this round, I'm going to use Churret and do a move action, and I'm going to move into Ord Mantel. Now, I'm going to move from Ilum. I can do this. I don't have to say where my base is, but if I'm moving items or units out of my base, and I'm going to use move all of these, so everything in my base I'm moving out, I have to move it to an adjacent system. So I'm going to move them over here, and I'm going to drop these two rebel troopers. Now, what that means is the Empire knows that my system with the rebel base is adjacent to Ord Mantel. And the only one <laughs> that they that can be our base because of the solo rules being being a remote system, the Empire knows Ilum is our base. And we have no units there. So this could be bad, but I really want to take out Ord Mantel. Based on how I read the solo rules, the Empire, as long as they have enough leaders, will send one here for this fight. So they're going to send Darth Vader because he's got three rerolls for the ground. And really, right now it looks like they might actually have the edge on the ground. However, I'm going to play Bay's loyalty here, and it says destroy two health worth of units in this system. So I can just take out that ATST with no fight. This means this guy is toast, and this location is no longer subjugated. Although it was a super quick battle, we do get to play this, I believe, because it says play after you win a ground battle in a subjugated system. We just gained another influence. We'll move from 14 down to 13. We'll still roll the die for the Empire, but if they do a move action, they're going to move towards Ilum. They now know the ruse is up. And they get a three, so they're going to start moving the Death Star towards us at Ilum. They're going to move all their units from Felucia down here to Mandalore and bring all of these ground troops, except for one, because that is a subjugated system. So they'll leave that there. But yeah, they are now only two spaces away from taking out Ilum and winning the game. Of course, they have to do that with a leader, and we'll use General Veer since he has the least amount of skill icons. We'll now have Obi-Wan use Infiltration, and I believe we're going to do that in Naboo. A 4 through a 6, and they're going to try and stop that. Yeah, you know who they're going to send. They're going to send C Colonel Yularen. He also has three intel icons. 3v3, we're red. One, two, three, one, two. <laughs> I'm loving these dice. We have either immediate. Place this card's target marker on any rebel system. At the start of each refresh phase, if this marker is still in that system, instead of playing an additional objective card, you may discard one to gain one reputation. Ooh, that is nice. The second one is combat play after you win a space or ground battle in a system that contains a sabotage marker you may then remove the sabotage marker yeah that isn't going to happen right now <laughs> so let's put that on the bottom and we'll put this cell on top mover mission they are going to move again they're going to go ahead and use a general tag to come into Cato Nymodia. they're going to bring all of these units each one of those can hold four and since that is a loyal location, they don't have to leave any units. And they can also pull from Corellia. Those can each hold two units. 
So, oh, is it two or is it four? My apologies, it's four. So they are just gonna fill this space up. They are definitely gonna subjugate this system. <laughs> But they don't even care. They're just coming to try and take out Ilum. We're going to go ahead and resolve Seek Yoda. And this is resolved, so the Empire can't stop this. Attach the Master Yoda ring to this leader. Once per game round, when this leader is in the same system as a mission or a combat, you can reroll one die. If Luke Skywalker resolves this, he turns into a Jedi and has the Yoda ring. <laughs> but that has to happen in the Dagobah system. You better believe we know where that's going. Right here. Mover mission. And it's another move. They are on the move. They're going to start bringing more units together. Using Soon Tier Fell, they're going to bring their Star Destroyer over here with four TIE Fighters. And unfortunately, those four TIE Fighters are stranded because they can't move from system to system without another uh, large unit carrying them. What do you guys say we try and sabotage Corelli again, huh? <laughs> it has worked in the past. Let's see if Han Solo can do it. Is the Empire going to be too distracted to stop it? Yes, they are. One through a three, they're not going to stop it. Yes! We will go ahead and sabotage Corellia for the third time. <laughs> Here we go. Mission or move? And they're going to do a mission. We'll reveal the first mission, and we have no capture rebel operative. Attempt against a rebel leader that is in a system that contains an imperial unit. If successful, capture that leader. Well, we're going to have to use Krennic's finest for this, and the only one we can capture is Obi-Wan Kenobi. Man, I hate getting played as a fool, so no wonder they let us get the intel. And look at this. Obi-Wan has no fight, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six fight, four regular dice, and two green. They just need one success, and poor Obi-Wan has been captured on Naboo. Any successes here means he's captured. Yeah, I see just a couple. <sighs> so here's the thing about a captured leader. Obi-Wan is not going to be able to move back into my leader pool at the end of this round. And if any of these ships move, they can also carry Obi-Wan with him. But if ever Obi-Wan is all alone on a planet, so let's say I take out the other units there, he's automatically freed. I also have cards that I can use to break him out, but oh, dang. With morale being a little bit low now that Obi-Wan has been captured, we're going to play our contingency plan. Assign this leader to a starting mission from your hand, even one that has been already attempted or resolved this round. We don't have Lando, so that doesn't matter. But we're going to do another sabotage. I'm just not going to let them produce anything this round. They just moved out of Salakami, so we are going to sabotage it. Are they going to try and oppose this? A five? They are. But here's the thing. The two leaders they have left have no fists, which is awesome. So General Moff Tarkin will try and stop this, but all we need is one success. So that shouldn't be terrible. We get to roll one red and two green. Just need one success. And we got it just barely. Thank you, Saw Gerrera. Moving back to the Empire, they actually only have one leader left. They've been blowing through their leaders. And none of the ships can move anymore, so they're not going to worry about moving this round. They're just going to do another mission. And it's one they can do. Display of power. Yeah, three and three. Wow, okay. Attempt in any populist system. If successful, gain two loyalty. Okay, so what this means, when you see two loyalty, think of loyalty as like a sliding marker. If it's on the rebel side and you gain one loyalty, it goes to neutral. If it's at neutral and you gain a loyalty, it goes to being uh, your loyalty. If it's two, it would go directly from being the um, rebel loyalty all the way over into the um, Empire loyalty. This is a little bit hard to watch, but obviously they're going to do Mon Calamari. So they brought over the Death Star, or the, the plans of what they were doing, and the Mon Calamari, even though they gave us ships, were too scared, and they became loyal to the Empire. Oh! Well, we stalled the Empire pretty well this round. Because we have three leaders left, they don't have any leaders left because they're doing all their mobilization. So what we're first going to do is we're going to try and 
build an alliance. And we're going to try and build an alliance in Ord Mantel because I want those uh, those unit icons. So we'll do that. And then we're going to do our rapid mobilization. So if the rebel base is not revealed, move up to five units from one system to the rebel space system, ignoring adjacency. Or we can also establish a new rebel base if two leaders are assigned to this mission and draw eight probe cards instead of four. Heck yeah. We're going to go ahead and bring Princess Leia over here to Ord Mantel. Now we're going to have to roll because Darth Vader is here. We have a total of two diplomacy here plus one and then two green dice. Darth Vader has two dice for diplomacy. Five to two. I like my chances. And we're good. Two, four, five, six to one. Yeah, Darth Vader had no chance. His daughter totally outschooled him in diplomacy. Just in time for production, we'll be able to gain a blue and orange circle. Nice. Now we can resolve our rapid mobilization card. Now don't forget, when you play the Rebels, even competitively, you have to make sure you notice that it says at the end of this phase. So even if I had played this at the beginning of the round, I have to wait until the end of the phase to be able to play this card. That's important because the Empire could still have that entire turn, that command phase, to try and take out your Rebel base. You can't just reveal this and instantly move. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to reveal where my rebel base is. It's an Ilum. I'm going to give this card to the Empire. Now with the solo rules, any of the locations that are um, remote that they don't have units on actually get shuffled back into the probe deck. And since I used two leaders, what I'm going to do is I'll put these into our probe deck. Okay, and then I'm going to give this probe deck a good shuffle, 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 shuffle. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to reveal the top eight of these. And I can choose any of these eight as my um, rebel base, except for, since I'm playing solo rules, they have to be a remote system. That's why I wanted to make sure I drew eight, not just the four that you would normally draw, if you only placed one leader there. So we just need to make sure we get a remote system here. Ryloth. Ryloth is not, no. Um, Buthwani, Buthwani is not, okay. Yavin, Yavin is, so that's one option. One, two, three, four, Dagobah is, um, five, my ghetto is not, six, Tatooine is, seven, Felucia is not, and one more, Hoth. Oh, wow, so I actually have four choices. And based on just what I'm seeing, I think Hoth will be a great option. So now the rebel base is in Hoth, but for sure it's not an Illin for the Empire that they know so far. And then what I'll do with the rest of these is I'll shuffle them back in. We also need to reveal this card and see if we have a leader there, Malastare. We don't. So he will not capture anyone, which actually is okay. They've already captured Obi-Wan, so you can't capture more than one leader. So... I don't know, maybe we just won't look until Obi-Wan is either eliminated, hopefully that doesn't happen, or we have um, no leaders captured. We're now going to play Cut Supply Lines. Play if at least three Imperial systems contain either a sabotage marker or a rebel unit. I have one, two, three sabotage markers out. We have just now gained another influence. Heck yeah. The clock is ticking for the Empire. We're down to 12. Something I should mention, if I had any units on this rebel base space, I would have had to place all of them on Illum. But here's the thing, I had actually moved them all out to Ord Montel last round, or during the last round. So I didn't even have any units there. And now that I'm on Hoth, I have no units there. At the end of each round, I can place up to two units back in here, but it takes time to rebuild your base. So you don't want to be jumping around all the time because you don't get to bring your units. But since I had kind of moved out a couple, like my Mon Calamares and everything like that, I decided it was a good time to move it now and to do an aggressive move to get that influence. We've now removed all of the leaders on the board except for Obi-Wan Kenobi. And we'll gain the Empire. We'll gain two of these probe cards and Dathomir. They now know it's not in Dathomir. Gosh darn. And Bespin. Bespin is not a remote system, so that's okay that they know that. But man, they already know Ilum and Dathomir. We'll also draw our objective card. We know what this is. 
It's placing that target. And I think I'm going to have to, uh, that's an immediate, so I have to do this. Place this card's target marker in any rebel system. At the start of each refresh phase, if this marker is still in that system, instead of placing an objective card, you may discard one. Oh, that's awesome. I just have to pick one. Let's go ahead and place that over here on Ryloth. <laughs> Let's make them come all the way up there to stop that and distract them from Hoth. I almost forgot to draw my two mission cards. We have Plan the Assault. That looks cool. And For the Greater Good. Look at this, you guys. I can get both markers on camera. <laughs> so we're going to move to six. Now we get to build. Looking at production, look at how many loyal locations there are for the Rebels. I love it. And we really have worked on this right-hand side of the galaxy. This left-hand side, yeah, not so much. We have two locations that have enemy units, so we can't get their resources. But look at this build. This is awesome. Tons of units for us. Okay, For the Empire... The Empire doesn't nearly have as many locations, but they do have some strong locations that, they're un that are under their control. They do have three locations, though, that are sabotaged. But they're still looking like they're getting some good units, but I think we're actually making more, which is insane. Now, something I didn't show you guys. If you're playing the Empire, you can use this probe card thing. Now, this is easy for the AI because they know it can't be any of the populace systems. But yeah, you can go in here and like click locations when they're green to say, nope, that's not it. That's not it. And it really can help you keep control or make sure you understand which locations that you have confirmed does not have the rebel base. Kind of cool. Okay. All right. So I'm going to do the production and then we'll go from there. Well, here we go. We've got an airspeeder that we were able to make, some more rebel troopers, an X-wing. They're going to have this super star destroyer a tank and couple and a couple stormtroopers. So that's what we're going to put out this round. We've got some more ships here which look good, but yeah, they've got another star destroyer. They just keep building those things. For deployment, it's kind of a no question. The super star destroyer is going to be here in Mon Calamari and we're going to throw a tank there as well. We'll place the other two stormtroopers here in Mandalore. For us, we're going to go ahead and play a Rebel Trooper and an Airspeeder into the Rebel base. It's amazing that Mustafar is still here under our control, so I'm going to go ahead and place our X-Wing and our Rebel Trooper here as well. That's going to end this round. We really need to find a way to keep pushing this clock up. If there's some way that I could take back Naboo, that would give me one influence. And then I know at the end of each round, as long as I protect Ryloth over there, I will also gain one influence just by discarding any objective card in my hand. So I've got ways that I can push that clock up. I just need to survive. Right now, the only thing that he knows is we're not in Ilum, and I think that's it. Yeah. So, oh, and Dantooine. He knows that we're not in Dantooine. That's the other one. So over here, right here and right here. So... Other than that, he doesn't know where we are, so this is good. I'm feeling good. I think I'm going to keep pushing through. Let's go ahead and do at least one more round. I'm hoping maybe two more. 